He says that we are scattered after the persecution of Stephen, went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Adjio, which were outside the city of Israel, preaching to none but only the Jews. Meaning, they were preaching only to the Jews. So this statement in the Bible about four quotations, Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, Matthew chapter uh, 15, verse 26, Matthew chapter 5, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 6, and Act of the Apostles chapter 11, verse 19, prove what the Quran says, that Jesus was sent only to the Jews. Then what was the primary assignment of Jesus, according to the Quran? And I come in order to confirm what was revealed in the Torah, meaning the law of Moses. So Jesus was sent in order to confirm the law of Moses. And he said, And I am giving you the good news of a messenger that will come after me, whose name is Ahmad. So Quranically, we are told that Jesus made a prophecy about the coming of Muhammad. And that the primary aim of the coming of Jesus to the Jews was to confirm the law of Moses, who was also sent to the Jews to emancipate them or redeem them from the bondage of the Egyptians. This is what Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 18. Jesus said, and I quote Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 18, Think not that I have come to destroy you the law and the prophets. No, I have not come to destroy them, but I come in order to fulfill them. For verily, verily, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass away from the law till all be fulfilled. Then after that, Jesus made a prophecy about the coming of a prophet. Now we are going, before we bring out or fish out this prophecy made by Jesus and other prophets, I would like to go into the genealogical origin of Muhammad's prophethood in the Bible. Every person that is a reader in the Bible, a reader in the Bible, whosoever is well acquainted with the teaching of the Bible, he knows about the story of Abraham, the man of God. The Muslims claim Abraham, the Jews claim Abraham, the Christians claim Abraham. None of the Jewish people or the Christians or the Muslims say that he does not know anything about who? About Abraham. Because the spiritual blessings confer upon Abraham, the man of God, is mentioned in the Bible and is also mentioned in the Holy Quran. And Abraham is mentioned in a respected manner in both the Bible and what? And the Holy Quran. We all know Abraham. God had made a promise to Abraham. According to the book of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. God Almighty says to Abraham, Abraham, leave your people, leave your father's country, you know, leave your kindred, and go to the land that I will show you, for I will make you to be a great nation. I will multiply your children as evidently that they shall not be number for multitude. God was speaking to Abraham. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in your seed shall the family of the earth be blessed. This indicates that the nations of the earth will be blessed through the seed of Abraham. Now we ask ourselves, who were the seed of Abraham? Through which God Almighty said that he will bless the nations of the earth. Because Abraham at that time that God Almighty was speaking to Abraham, he did not have a single child, and God was speaking to him. He did not have a single child. Then the Bible made us to understand that Abraham had a wife. The name of this particular wife of Abraham was who? Sarah. She was the first wife of Abraham. Then Sarah had a bond woman she got from Egypt, according to the story of the Bible here, you know, called Hagar. Hagar. But it reached a certain time that Abraham was looking for a son and his wife could not deliver because of her barrenness. And he could not deliver because of his old age. Yet God Almighty had promised to make him a great nation, multiplying his children evidently, and also blessing the nation of the earth through his own children. Later, Sarah approached Abraham 
and she said unto Abraham, according to the book of Genesis, chapter 16, verses 2 to 3. I hope, Mr. Pastor, you are writing them, because I want you to go through them. Genesis, chapter 16, verses 2 to 3. Sarah said unto Abraham, you see, the Lord has withheld me from bearing children. I could not bear. Therefore, take this bond woman to be your wife. Take this bond woman to be your wife, so that you will have a son by her, because the Lord has withheld me from bearing. It was a divine call. So Sarah advised Abraham that he should take this bond woman, Hagar, as what? As his second wife. And this Hagar was from Egypt, belonging to the house of a king in Egypt, who said that it is better for my daughter to be a wife, you know, uh, to be a slave in the house of a prophet of God, a man of God, than for her to be a wife in the house of somebody that is not a prophet. So what happened? Sarah advised Abraham to take this bond woman to be his second wife. And that was a divine blessing upon this particular bond woman. She was no longer a bond woman, but she became the wife of Abraham. That is why Genesis chapter 16 verses 2 to 3 mention her as the second wife of Abraham. Then, as fate will have it, when Abraham and Sarah and Hagar were together as husband and wife, when he knew her, Kennedy, as his own wife, she became pregnant. And as a result of this pregnancy, jealousness started between the first wife of Abraham on one side and the second wife of Abraham on the other side. Meaning, between Sarah and Hagar. And Hagar has to leave the house of Abraham. The Bible says that as she was going into the wilderness, the angel of God ministered unto her, according to the book of Genesis, chapter 16, verses 10 to 11. The angel of God called her from Hagar, uh, from heaven, and said, Hagar, Hagar, you are with a child, and you will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, for God has had your affliction. And I will multiply your children as exceedingly that they shall not be numbered for multitude. We are told in Genesis chapter 16, verses 10 to 11, that the angel of God calls to Hagar when she was alone in the wilderness, telling her, prophesying unto her, that she was going to give birth to a son. And when she gave birth to this particular son, she should name him Ishmael, because God has had her affliction. This indicates that according to the Bible, Ishmael was born according to prophecy. It was a prophecy by the angel of God. His name was mentioned in heaven before he was born, according to what the Bible says here. Then what happened? According to what the Bible says, in the book of Genesis chapter 16, verses 15 to 16, the book of Genesis chapter 16, verses 15 to 16, Abraham gave birth to his first son, called Ishmael, when he was 86 years old, at the age of 86. At the age of 86, Abraham gave birth to Ishmael, at the age of 86. Then Sarah and Abraham named him Ishmael, just according to the prophecy of the angel. You know, the angel, that the God Almighty that sent an angel to give a name to the son of Zachariah as John the Baptist. Or oh, the angel that came unto Mary and told Mary that she was going to give birth to a son and that the name of that son should be Christ, is the same angel that appears to the mother of Ishmael, Hagar, the second wife of Abraham, and told her that she was going to give birth to a son, and when she gave birth to that son, she should call his name Ishmael. Now Abraham, accordingly, when he gave birth to Ishmael at the age of 86, as mentioned there in Genesis chapter 16, verse 15 to 16, Abraham named him Ishmael, because that was the name that was given by God. This indicates that God Almighty had a divine plan for that particular child, Ishmael. Then Sarah, after Ishmael, got her own news also, and she gave birth to Isaac. Isaac was also born according to promise, and his name was mentioned as what? As Isaac, according to the book of Genesis, 
chapter 21, verses 4 to 5. Genesis chapter 21, verses 4 to 5. Abraham gave back to Isaac when he was 100 years old. He gave back to Isaac. When he was 100 years old, he gave back to Isaac. Now, it means that Isaac, the second son of Abraham, was born when Ishmael was 14 years. Because if you subtract 86 from 100, you have 14. So up to the age of 13, when Ishmael was 13 years, Isaac was not even born. And that was the age when Ishmael was circumcised. When Abraham was also circumcised at the age of what? At the age of 99 years. You know? So, biblically and Quranically, Islamically, Ishmael and Isaac were the sons and sons of Abraham. Ishmael and Isaac were the sons and sons of Abraham. That is why when you read the Bible, in First Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 28, the Bible says, Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. The Bible says, Abraham had two sons that comes out of the bowel of Abraham. Ishmael, the first son, and Isaac, the second son. Now, I quite become somehow flabbergasted and aghast when I hear some people saying that Isaac was the only son of Abraham or Isaac was the only son of promise. This is unbiblical. What they are saying is unbiblical. It is only the figment of their own imagination, but not what the Bible says. We have to abide by what the Bible says. Now the question is, these two sons of Abraham mentioned in the Bible, did God Almighty establish any covenant with any one of them? Of course, just as God promised that he was going to bless the nation of the earth through the seed of Abraham. We are told, according to what the Bible says, in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 20, the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 20, God Almighty said unto Abraham, and I quote, because of Ishmael your son, because of Ishmael your son, I have heard your prayer. Behold, I have blessed Ishmael. I will make Ishmael to be fruitful. I will multiply his children exceedingly, that they shall not be number for multitude. Twelve princes will he begat, and I will make him to become a great nation. These are five different blessings conferred upon Ishmael by the Almighty God, that he was to have twelve princes, meaning twelve nations. And this nation of Ishmael, these twelve princes of Ishmael, are mentioned in the same Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter 25, verses 12 to 17. These twelve nations, according to the names of the sons of Ishmael, they are mentioned in the book of Genesis chapter 25, verses 12 to 17. They are mentioned here in the Bible. This means that God Almighty was able to fulfill his promise, just as he said that he would make him to become a, you know, a great nation and 12 places. God fulfilled that in the book of Genesis chapter 25, verses 12 uh, to 17. Then what happened? On Isaac also. God Almighty also blessed Isaac, just as he blessed Ishmael. The Muslims are not in doubt about that. The Muslims actually believe that Isaac was blessed. You know, the Muslims also believe that Ishmael was blessed. Now, from the geographical point of view, from the historical point of view, the descendant of Abraham, the descendant of Abraham, the descendant of Abraham through Israel, where the Jews are the Arabs, and the descendant of Abraham through Isaac, where are the Jews. This indicates that the Arabs and the Jews descended from Abraham. The Jews descended from Abraham through Isaac. Isaac gave birth to two sons, Esau and Jacob. And Jacob gave birth to 12 sons. You know, that is why Israel, the land of Israel, was named after the grandson of Abraham called Jacob, the son of Isaac. Because his title was Israel. It means Jacob. So the Israelites descended from Abraham through Jacob through Isaac. And the Ishmaelites, meaning the Arabs, hmm? descended from Abraham to the first son of Abraham called Ishmael. Second chapter, we are told in the Bible that the angel of God appeared for the second time to who? To Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. In the book of Genesis, chapter 21, 
verses 14 to 19. The book of Genesis, chapter 31, verses 14 to 19. The angel appears unto Hagar when she was in the wilderness with the child. You know, the angel says unto Hagar, Hagar, arise, lift up the child, Ishmael, and hold him in your hand, for I will make him to be a great nation. And when she wake up, she found some water gushing out of the ground where the child was lying, according to the Bible. That water is what we call the well of Zanza, which is still present in Saudi Arabia. The Muslim pilgrims, whenever they go to Mecca, they used to fetch that water because that water is called the holy water and it cures so many other diseases. It is called the well of Zanza. That water was founded by the mother of Ishmael called Hagar in the presence of the angel of God called Angel Gabriel. According to what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 21, verses 14 to 17. Now, from the lineage of Abraham through Isaac, in fulfillment of the covenant established between God Almighty and Isaac, God Almighty raised many prophets from the lineage of Isaac. You know, from the lineage of Abraham through Isaac, among of which we have David, Solomon, Moses, Zachariah, Aaron, you know, Jesus, John the Baptist, and so many other prophets that emerged from among the Jews. They all descended from Abraham. Through who? Through the second son of Abraham, called Isaac. Then in fulfillment of the covenant of God to Ishmael, just as God Almighty raised prophets from the lineage of Abraham to Isaac, he also raised prophet Muhammad from, Wasallam, from the lineage of Abraham to Ishmael. Because what is good for the goose is also good for the Ghana. Both Ishmael and Isaac were the sons and sons of Abraham. Now, if God Almighty should raise prophet from the lineage of Abraham to Isaac, the second son of Abraham, you know, then what do you think will frustrate the plan of God in raising a prophet also from the lineage of Abraham to Ishmael in fulfillment of the blessings of the Almighty God conferred upon Ishmael, the first son of Abraham, and it also means that the coming, the frequent coming of the angel of God to meet the mother of Ishmael called Hagar, it means that God Almighty had a divine plan for that particular first son of Abraham. And that divine plan of God was fulfilled with the advent of Prophet Muhammad. How do we solve this problem and pinpoint where Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible to fulfill the blessings of the Almighty God? Now, the covenant was initiated with Isaac. Of course, there is no doubt about that. As mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 21, where God says that, that with Isaac will I establish with covenant, my covenant at this time of the hour in the next year. This verse proved that the covenant was to begin with Isaac, the second son, not with the first son. And God actually began that covenant with Isaac. And that was the reason why the Israelite prophet came before Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad was kept for the last. Then what happened? Jesus was the last prophet among the Jews. Though some people do not believe that Jesus is a prophet of God. The Bible mentioned him as a prophet of God. In the book of Matthew chapter 21 verses 10 to 11, in the book of Luke chapter 7 verse 16, in the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 4, in the book of Matthew also chapter 21 verse 46, and in the book of Luke chapter 13 verse 33, and in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 19. Let me mention, Matthew chapter 21 verse 10 to 11, Luke chapter 7 verse 16, Matthew chapter 21 verse 46, Mark chapter 6 verse 4, then Luke chapter 13 verse 33, and Luke chapter 24 verse 19. All these verses address Jesus as a prophet of God. And also in the book of John chapter 6 verse 14, Jesus is called a prophet of God, about eight verses. So Jesus was the last prophet that was raised among the Jews. Now Jesus, from the divine knowledge that God Almighty had given unto him, he knew that after him, God will no longer raise a prophet from the lineage of Abraham through Isaac, that he was the last prophet. So he made a prophecy. This prophecy is mentioned in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 42 to 43. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 42 to 43. And I quote the statement of Jesus. Jesus said, The view never read in the scriptures. The stone which was rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. The stone which was rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken away from you, the Jews. And it will be given to another nation that bear the fruit of it. Which means that God will take away his kingdom from the Jews and it will be given to another nation that bear the proper fruit. You know, God will take away his kingdom from the Jews according to what Jesus said and he will give it to the other nation. Jesus made this prophecy after saying the stone which was rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. Let us analyze this statement of Jesus because it has a divine meaning. Did you never read in the scriptures? Which scripture was Jesus referring to? He was referring to the book of Psalm. The stone which was rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. Psalm 118 verses 22 to 26. Psalm 118 verses 22 to 26. And I quote the statement of David in the book of Psalm. Psalm 118, 118 verses 22 to 26. David said, the stone which was rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. I beseech you, O Lord, send down this blessing, send down this prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Where did David got this prophecy? Where did he got this statement? This one rejected by the builders. He got this prophecy from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 to 10. What happens at the house of Abraham between his two wives, the first wife and the second wife, just as we used to have in our matrimonial homes, in some of our matrimonial homes. When Sarah gave birth to her son, Isaac, when Isaac was two years, Sarah found the son of the Egyptian woman, you know, mocking. Thank you, Mary. Mocking. And she said unto Abraham, Abraham, Cast out this woman and her son. The first wife said that the second wife should be driven away from the house. Because of this part, the son of this particular woman shall not be of the same year with my son. I Then she went to own all the inheritance of the house of Abraham. So she was saying to Abraham that he should send Hagar and her son away from the house. So with this, Abraham was not happy. With the advice Sarah told him. The God says unto Abraham in Genesis chapter 21, verse 13. God says, Abraham, listen to what Sarah has said unto you. Because of the son of that particular woman, will I make a separate nation because he is your child? So, the statement uttered by Sarah, the first wife of Abraham, even though she uttered that statement out of racial discrimination and jealousy. Yet, God Almighty accepted her statement because it coincided with the plans of God to make a separate nation for Israel and a separate nation for Isaac. Even if Sarah did not utter that word, Hagar has to leave the house of Abraham to fulfill a divine promise and plan of God in another land. You know, so God accepted that. You know, so we are told that Ishmael dwelt in the land of Paran in Saudi Arabia according to the book of Genesis chapter 21, verse 21. Now, Jesus said, this word Haga is an Egyptian dialect. And etymologically, the word Haga, it means tongue. Check any Arabic dictionary. The word Haga, which is Hajar or Hajara, linguistically, it means tongue. So when Jesus said, the stone which was rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone, he was referring to the adventure of Haga and her son, Ishmael, the experience of Hagar and her son. Then Jesus said, which has later become the chief cornerstone. Jesus said, this is the Lord doing you. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Then Jesus added, verily, verily, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken away from you, and it will be given to another nation that bear the proper fruit. That is the nation of the Ishmaelites. When the kingdom of God was taken away from the Jews, the descendant of Abraham through Isaac, it was transferred to the other side, the other side of the coin, the descendant of Abraham through Ishmael, in fulfillment of the covenant of God. And that kingdom was established with the covenant of Prophet Muhammad. Now, where is Muhammad mentioned in the Bible? In fulfillment of this particular covenant. Let us go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18. 
Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. God Almighty spoke unto Moses that the Lord, the Lord your God, uh, God Almighty spoke unto Moses that I will raise up unto them a prophet in the midst of them, but from among their own brethren, like you, Moses. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he will speak unto them all what I will command him. And it shall come to pass. Whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which that prophet will speak in my name, I will punish you. Now God promised that he will raise a prophet from among the brethren of the Jews. Who were the brethren of the Jews? The Arabs and the Jews were of the same father. The descendants of Abraham through Ishmael were the brethren of the descendants of Abraham through Isaac. The Jews and the Arabs were of the same father, but different mothers. Different mothers. So the children of Ishmael on one side were the brethren of the children of Isaac on the other side. That is why the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 25 verse 9 that when Abraham died at the age of 175, Ishmael and Isaac came together to bury their father. Hmm. Which means that that brotherly relationship was still there, intact with them. They come together and they buried Abraham, according to what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 25, verse 9. Then the Bible further tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 16, verse 12, that Ishmael dwelt in the presence of his own brethren. That means the Arabs. Therefore, when God says a prophet from among their own brethren, God is referring to the Arabs. And I will put my words like Moses. He will marry and become children like Moses. He will come with a new divine law like Moses. He will face a physical combat like Moses. You know, so many other similarities between Moses and Prophet Muhammad. And he said, and I will put my words in his mouth. I will put my words in the mouth of that prophet. The whole Quran, the whole Quran was put into the mouth of Prophet Muhammad. He was taught by the Holy Spirit, known as Angel Gabriel. It was the Holy Spirit that brought this Quran and taught Prophet Muhammad the Quran. The Quran is not the word of Muhammad. For a period of 23 years, it was revealed in accordance to the requirement of time and circumstances. The Quran was revealed to him. That is why when you compare this statement with what is written in the book of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 12, this prophecy was made 700 years before Jesus and 1,300 years before Muhammad. And I quote, it is written that, and the book is revealed unto him who cannot read, saying, read, and he said, I am not learned. This prophecy found fulfillment in the Holy Quran, in the visit of Muhammad, a supernatural unprecedented event that happened in Saudi Arabia, 12 kilometers away from the city of Mecca. Now we are told that this particular prophecy in Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, the prophet mentioned in Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, up to the time of John the Baptist, the Jews were looking for that prophet. According to the book of John chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. John chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. We are told that the Jews sent priests and Levites to ask John the Baptist, John the Baptist, who are you? Who are you? They say, who are you? Are you the Christ? He said, I am not the Christ. What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not Elijah. Are you that prophet? He said, I am not that prophet. Three questions. Are you the Christ? He said, no. Are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you that prophet? No. Why did they ask these three questions? Because they had a premonition, a prophecy about the coming of three prophets. First, the coming of the Messiah, who will redeem them from the bondage of the Romans. Second, the second coming of Elijah. Because according to the second King chapter 2, verses 11 to 12, the Bible says that Elijah ascended to heaven as Elijah ascended. And the Jews believed that any person that ascended to heaven will come back. They were expecting Elijah. And thought they were expecting the prophet like Moses mentioned in the Trinity 18, 18. Now, Jesus answered, no. no uh, John Baptist answered, no, no, no. Huh. Then what happened? Later, Jesus came and he confirmed in Matthew chapter 17, verses 10 to 13, that John the Baptist was the one that came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Now, out of the three questions, we have John the Baptist who came in the spirit and power of Elijah according to Jesus, and we also have John the Baptist. Remember one question. Are you that prophet? Who was that prophet? Lastly, Jesus mentioned, he named that prophet as the comforter. In the book of John chapter 16, verses 12 to 14. John chapter 16, verses 12 to 14. 
Jesus told his people, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, what is the meaning of the word spirit of truth? Compare this with 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Spirit of truth means prophet of truth. Spirit of falsehood means prophet of falsehood. That is why the Bible says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit to see whether they are of God. For many false prophets have got into the world. You know, so the word spirit of truth is synonymous with prophet of truth. So Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatsoever he shall hear from God, that is what he will speak. For he shall receive some information about me, and he will pass this information to you, and he will glorify me, and he will show you the judgment to come. That was the statement of Jesus. All these prophets mentioned by Jesus were fulfilled with the coming of Muhammad. First, Muhammad guided us into all the truth. He guided the world into all the truth with the everlasting gospel. Second, Jesus said he will...